We'll continue our discussion of the constitutive equation by examining the equations for a linearly elastic or Hookean solid. Elastic solids have the following characteristics. First, they should have a unique unloaded natural state to which they return when all the stresses are removed. And the stress depends only on the strain in the material. More generally, as a result of this, we can say that elastic solids store all the work that's done by the stresses in deforming them as potential energy, or sometimes we call it strain energy. And this energy is released when the stresses are removed. Thus, the deformation of an elastic solid is a th thermodynamically reversible process. And we can conclude from this that the stress in an elastic solid is independent of the path or history of the strain. In other words, it doesn't matter how the strain state was achieved, only what the strain state is, that's the only determinant of the stress in the elastic material. And the process of loading and unloading a material is reversible so that all the work done on the material is stored in it, and then it's all released when the material is unloaded. Elasticity is very useful idealization. For many materials, especially engineering materials, the strains that they experience under normal design or working conditions is very low. And so under these lows, the stress-strain relationship is linear. And we can use the Cauchy infinitesimal strain. Imagine we have a specimen subjected to uniaxial tension or compression with a cross-sectional area A so that the uniaxial tensile or compressive stress sigma xx is f over A. And the length is L and so the strain is delta L divided by L. If we plot the stress versus strain in a linearly elastic solid, we get a straight line for tension and compression within a certain range. And the slope of that straight line is called the Young's modulus, and it's a measure of the elastic stiffness of the material. At some point, if we stre stretch the material beyond a certain point, uh, the material becomes anelastic. This is called the elastic limit. And in the case of a ductile material, the elastic limit would be the yield point at which the material becomes plastic and uh, starts to deform irreversibly, such that when we unload it, it doesn't return to its original length. In a brittle material, the elastic limit may correspond with the point at which the material starts to fracture and, and fail. Another experiment that can be done in a linearly elastic material is to measure the ratio of the transverse strain components, for example, EZZ or EYY in this direction, in proportion to strain in the longitudinal or loaded direction, in this case, EXX. In a linearly elastic material, and we see this in many engineering materials for small strains, the strain in the transverse direction is linearly proportional to the strain in the longitudinal direction. It's, in the, it's of the opposite sign, so if we're stretching the sample in this direction, then it'll shrink in the other direction. And that ratio of the negative shrinkage strain to the positive tensile strain is called the Poisson ratio, and uh, it's typically about 0.3 or 0.4 in many engineering materials. These two technical constants, E, the Young's modulus, and nu, the Poisson ratio, can both be measured at the same time in a single uniaxial tension test. And if the material is isotropic, meaning that had we done that same test from a sample of the material cut from any other orientation, we would have got the same result, then in fact these two constants, the Young's modulus and the Poisson ratio, turn out to be sufficient to completely define the properties of an isotropic hooky and elastic solid. Now, it's important to realize, as we've pointed out before, that the context of the, of the loading, not just the 
the material itself determined the accuracy of the assumption of linear elasticity. You can see that in linearly elastic materials, this approximation holds well, but for small strains, typically considerably less than 1%. Beyond those small strains, we reach the elastic limit, and not only is the stress-strain behavior not linear, it also quickly it becomes non-elastic. So neither the assumption of linear linearity or elasticity will be valid above a certain uh, loading.